Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to our book club. We took, I think, the summer off, but we're back and uh, we're here to talk about Braiding Sweetgrass, which was a really good book. Um, yeah, but how are you? Everybody, hey! How are you? <laughs> I'm good. What about you? <laughs> I'm good too. Um, yeah, it's been a very long time since we met for book club. So hello to everyone again. Uh, I am trying my best at being a good host. So leave me a comment in the comments and tell me how you have been the whole summer. And this book was super long. So for me, it wasn't like time off. It was just like we're going through the book and you are going through the book too right that's true yeah because this like the way that this book was structured and the way that I think uh Robin Wall Kimmerer writes it's almost like it it honors the nature the, the time that nature uses so it's not like you know in human time where we're like one minute two minutes I only have 15 minutes to read this book so it was actually a really slow read but I think it's like intentionally slow um, and I really appreciate that about this book because it really, it's a really good reminder to slow down and to really be with the plants, to be with the transmissions. So that was something I really appreciated about this book. Oh, that's so good. I love that you said that. And it's also about like kind of creating that relationship with the plant or with the nature in, in general. And that takes time too. And you could see like every story is about getting into that connection and it's through your years, through her life. So it does take time. And so it was good for us also to take time with that and not speed read or force ourselves to, to finish it. So if you're watching this and you haven't finished the book, it's okay, take your time. Even like there's no spoiler to this interview, to this conversation that we're having with each other. So you can keep on watching and then finish the book whenever you're meant to finish it yeah that's really true like I read up to I got up to this story the windy windigo footprints and I haven't like I still got this much to go um but I'm okay talking about this book like I'm gonna honor it and I'm gonna take as much time as I want with this book <laughs> exactly yeah. yeah and as a as a little thing I actually listened to this book years ago and right now I've been re-listening to parts of it but it's also a book that you return to because it's not that one straight thing that you completely remember it's very nice to be like oh it's time it's time for a little story a little reminder of the connection that we can have that braids both our ancestral story or dna with uh you know with the present moment and with what is going to happen in the future between us and the natural world so take your time and it it is a bible right it's it's, it's a bible of 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 love with nature mm. and the kind of interaction we can have with it yeah that part is that part really resonates it's like um Oh, right on the cover. I always think about this. So Elizabeth Gilbert, she's like, it's a hymn of love to the world. And I'm like, yeah, it really is. It just really makes you appreciate the little things. Like you don't really think about it, right? Like you're just walking out on the street, but like there's an oak tree there. And even that oak tree on the street has, has its medicine, has its part in the world. So it's a, it's a really beautiful book. And I think one that's really necessary because we also need to start to think about our relationship with nature, with the the non-human aspect of our world, I think. And it's a really good way of reconnecting with that um, through this book, I feel like. It, it, I think this book really highlighted like nothing is too small for me to just, you know, like overlook it when I walk in my neighborhood and the seasons are changing, I see, you know, like now it's autumn and the leaves are on the ground. And I start to see like, 
it's not just like yeah that's fall it is fall at the same time it's like yeah it's fall because of the way that the sun is interacting with the trees and the temperature has changed and the winds have come so it's like the little ecosystem in front of me that just you know it just looks like oh I wake up and it's fall suddenly it's not just that it's it's very small amounts of magic making it fall I love that I want to ask you when you watch this do you feel that love within you when you watch nature unfold before your eyes it's a beautiful show right and beauty for me it's it's nature giving us love when it's showing us the light of the sun and the raindrops and you know all of that so do you feel that way too I feel that way too and I live near a forest so I walk in that forest a lot every time I go in the forest it's just a really good reminder of like just what love is you know I there are times where you know I don't go to the forest for a month or I come into the forest and I had a really bad day and I'm like you know all cross and stuff and the trees are just they're always going to be the trees they're never they've never once made me feel like oh stop coming in here and throwing the energy in here you know stop stop doing this why are you feeling blah 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 like and I think just having the trees and like observing nature and nature is nature always is it's just going to be what it's going to be um I think that's where I feel the most love just love because it's it's just love because you are it's just love because you're being right yeah can I read something because you quoted Elizabeth Gilbert and I was rereading Big Magic by Elizabeth Gilbert and there's a whole chapter that is on Robin Wall Kimmerer and it's about love. So can I read it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So we just talked about the love that we have for nature and now it's going to be about the love that nature has for us. So the chapter is, does it love you? And Elizabeth Gilbert says, my friend, Dr. Robin Wall Kimmerer is a botanist and an author who teaches environmental environmental biology at the SUNY College of Environmental Science and Forestry in Syracuse, New York. My students are all fervent, young environmentalists, earnest as can be, desperate to save the world. Before they can get down to the business of world saving though, Robin asks, often asks her students these two questions. The first question is, do you love nature? Everywhere hand in the room goes up. The second question is, do you believe that nature loves you in return? Every hand in the room goes down. At which point Robin says, then we have a problem already. The problem is this, these earnest young world savers honestly believe that the living earth is indifferent to them. They believe that humans are nothing but passive consumers and that our presence here on earth is a destructive force. We take, take, take and offer nothing of benefit to nature in return. They believe that humans are here on this planet by random accident and that therefore the earth doesn't give a damn about us. Ancient people do not did not see it this way, needless to say. Our ancestors always operated with a sense of being in a reciprocal emotional relationship with their physical surroundings, whether they felt that they were being rewarded by mother nature or punished by her, at least they were engaged in a constant conversation with her. So it goes on and on. I really recommend the book, but that was a moment where I was like, oh my God, we are witnessing climate change and we are positioning ourselves and, you know, a lot of us, a lot of companies as, you know, those destroyers, which is true. But it doesn't mean that na- Mother Nature, that the Earth doesn't love us. I feel loved by her every day and and by her and by the sun and by everything. I, I feel that love and that's why it's a beautiful exchange. So I wanted to share that. <laughs> thank you for listening. Yeah, and thank you for sharing that. I think it's something really to think about because I, when I work with clients, sometimes they also express like surprise when, you know, they're told that the earth actually knows who you are. The earth knows your name, you know, in order for you to come onto this earth, the energetic exchange between you and the earth 
the earth had to consent to that and you're here so of course why wouldn't nature not love you why wouldn't the earth not know who you are yeah that really resonates I love that it reminds me of um, the fact that we have an earth star chakra beneath our feet that is anchored into the earth and that operates a relay of energy between us, between our different chakras up in the air, and that offers a service to the earth as well. Each step that we take is not just a step. It is an interaction, a meeting of the sole of your feet with the earth. And there's there's a huge flow, a huge pulse there that is very important. So I love that you said the earth knows your name and, and cares about you and knows you and consented to you. because. I really believe and I and I know for sure that we are here in service to her. Like we are stewards of her. So in a way she supports us, she nurtures us with the food that we take and, and a lot of things. So yes, there's abuse with you know corporations and there's there's definitely abuse, but there's also like we're within her womb right now and um, we often think that we're above the earth because we're on the surface, but the atmosphere is the earth. The, the oxygen, the clouds, everything, that's the earth too. So we're within her. We're not on her. We're not on top of her and therefore dominating her. We are within her womb and she's the mother that is feeding us. So yeah, that's, that's a beautiful thing that I wish everyone knew and was able to witness and confirm with their experience yeah i agree Great. nobody cry <laughs> we got this <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's beautiful like truly entering in in contact and and like i feel like we're like moving away from the book but that's definitely what the book shows us and, and tells us in different stories like we're we're in service and and we're nurtured yeah How else did you enjoy this book? I feel like, I really feel like this book, some of the chapters in it really were parallel to what I was feeling um, and what I have been feeling. And I think for a while now, I feel like this, like I just feel very uninspired with life and I'm just like, you know, is this all it's supposed to be? And, you know, some days I think like, oh, maybe I should just move off grid and, you know, like disengage from the world completely. Um, but it's actually showing me how to reconnect with nature in my own way in this, in, in this modern society that I feel very, I think, like sensitive to and a bit, you know, tired of. Um, it really showed me that, it showed me that nature is really ever present. Um, and like one of the stories, I think it's called The Honorable Harvest. Let me pull it up. Yeah, I bookmarked it. The Honorable Harvest where um, she talks about, there's like one part where she's like talking about how she goes into the grocery store and she sees, you know, like leaks on sale, but they're just in this styrofoam plastic kind of thing. And she knows that that is not how leak is, right? The energy of leak doesn't doesn't match it being like in a styrofoam plastic thing um and when I read it I was like oh my gosh that's exactly how I feel because I go into the supermarket and I just feel like disinterested in everything I'm like oh like everything doesn't feel alive everything doesn't feel you know like nourishing anymore to me um and when I read it I I realized that yeah I can't I don't have my own garden that I can go grow my own vegetables in right now but I realized that even though I disagree with a lot of the things that corporations do and I can you know choose not to direct my energy and my time and my money towards them when I sometimes you just need like a leak right so I when I connect with those supermarket veggies in my in my own time when I'm like cooking it and there's no shame like if you have go to a supermarket like of course you have to go to a supermarket not everybody has access to like a garden and you know being able to grow their own food but I think you can also still just start to think about where your veggies came from right 
in order to prepare a meal, like let's say you just need what onions, potatoes and carrots and like water just to make like a simple soup. It's like you, you can think about it this way in order for just like one onion to come to you, there needed to be the earth, there needed to be water, there needed to be like somebody looking after the onion, planting it, somebody harvesting it, um, you know, depending on where your onion came from, like maybe a truck brought it from like across the border into your like, you know, like sometimes we get it from America, so it comes into Canada. So there's actually a lot that goes into just like one simple onion. And here you are just like looking at it, sometimes you're just like, oh, it's just an onion. But like so much of it just comes from the earth and even for you know the water the people to be like looking after the onion that's also something that the earth provides so remembering that really reminded me of like abundance because abundance really comes in that form it's like for one simple soup I have like the earth growing all these carrots and onions and potatoes for me and it actually took a lot of effort and a lot of time just to have these ingredients in front of me, right? So it, it's very humbling just to know that even when I can't feel the nature and when I can't feel the earth, it's still there. It's just in a different form. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. It's true. And that's why some people bless their food or that's why for me, I really enjoy it and it gives me a lot of pleasure. And every time I go back to my sink to wash my dishes, I'm always laughing and smiling because I had such a good time and I'm taking in that pleasure of what it gave me. And I love nourishing my body with the good things as well. Um, so I know I, I just like really, I really enjoy eating and I really enjoy feeling that luck that I have that I, I can afford it as well. And yeah, it's just, yeah yeah because we're talking about plants so we're talking about like feeding ourselves from plants so we're lucky yeah thank you for sharing that yeah what about you what stood out for you any stories any chapters um for me what really stood out is i've i've been both times it's it was listening to the audiobook which is read by the author her voice you can feel the love that comes through it you can feel the experience um, the poetry and so what I love is the fact that there's both you know the science of it because she's a botanist and then she's a teacher so there's the science of plants braided into her ancestry and her stories about that and and the value of words and the value of how we use the words and what they mean and how they connect us back to all of it and the poetry and I, I just really love that. And it's a voice that I want to keep on learning from. And she has another book called Gathering Moss, which was published before. And it's a whole way of looking at very, very small plants because we're talking about moss and the story of survival and, and of adaptation that moss had to, in order to be able to grow on rocks, on, on many, many things. And I just, like, what stood out to me is Robin Wolkemerer herself. And I just want to continue on reading her books. So I hope that new ones are going to come up. And yeah, I just, that's what I love. And it inspires me to write as well. Like, I wish I could write like her. And and one day, maybe, I hope. But that's what I love so much. It's, it's from her heart. And at the same time, the mind is there. And... In spirituality, we often talk about, you know, the mind and body and the connection and, and, and the, the heart and, you know, the mind, body and soul. And I love that because it's all, it, it's all there. There's her soul through her heart. There's a body that, that is at work and gardening. And then there's a mind with her scientific aspects and her stories. So I really, I adore it. And I love her and I love her book. So I hope that everyone here had the chance to try it, even if it was just for a few stories and to be inspired by it. Yeah, I'm actually going to have to agree with you on the audiobook version because there were some chapters I used the audiobook for. Or her, you can really feel like the love and the... I don't know how to explain it. It's like, it's not, it's love. And it's also like, there's something in that 
narration that like you can really just tell like it almost feels like a voice for the plans that's coming through and a voice that for me what I I felt like what it inspired me to do is really like yeah I have to start learning that you know the way that we are treating the earth is is we have to change it because there's there's so much of the earth that I think we don't even think for a second um, to consider. Like, you know, there was um, the story where you're only supposed to take half of something or like returns, give something in return. And I think it really, it's a really good way to learn about, you know, proper, proper ways to honor what comes before us and what has always been here and to know that it's like we are not the ones that are controlling the earth and yeah there's like a whole thing that I'm struggling for words but um I think it it really also highlighted like capitalism and colonization to me um and how yeah I'm, I'm I'm not articulating it very well but I hope I'm getting my point across. It it really did um, change that for mm-hmm. me. Mm-hmm. And and you, I mean, you are articulating it to me. I understand what you mean, and yeah. it's just those concepts that were not always. Um, it's not always broadcasted to us, so it's a little bit difficult because there's both the abundance of the earth, like there's enough for everyone, yeah. and at the same time learning to take what we need and to feel satisfied with what we're eating as well and the quantities and everything and and to give back as well I I love the story with the coffee and like thinking that the first like when you have coffee you give the first sip to the earth and she was like yeah it's like an offering to the earth and like her grandfather's like no no it's because all the grounds of the coffee are like in the first sip so we're like removing it I really love that one but um yeah, um, I wanted to add just something with like the audiobook and also with like the written word, but there's like, she found the perfect balance of personal and universal. Mm. So we're listening to her story and we know that it's also something that could have happened to everyone. It could be put in place into our own lives. And I would love to see like a book, which would be a like, collection of short stories from everyone collect- connecting with the earth as well. Yeah, and and that could be like the second book, but I don't know. It was just, it was so beautiful. It, it's a it's a guide. It's a teacher. That book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a friend. <laughs> it is a friend. <laughs> this yeah. is how we relate to books with Sarah. We we talk to each other about a lot of books, and oh, yesterday you were friend. like, "Yeah, it's a friend." I was like, "Yes, <laughs> definitely." Mm. Um. I wanted to ask you about how you've been inspired by this book and the ongoing relationships that you might have with maybe a plant in, in your house or on, on the balcony if you have one. And like how, how is this book inspiring you to make different little choices or interactions with nature around you? Yeah, that's a very, that's a very good question. I feel like this book has really inspired me to you know like taking care of nature is like such a broad term but it's really like starting really small with taking care of nature right like I can do what I can do within my own control to start changing things for nature it's it's very different I think um for everybody so for me how I take care of nature um is going to look different from from you right And I think for me, starting small, so becoming very aware of even like the smallest energetic ecosystems around my surroundings. Um, I live like really close to an old growth forest or a forest. I think it's old growth. I'm pretty sure it's old growth. Some of it is old growth. Um, And being able to speak up for the ones that are quote unquote voiceless or you know like there's a pair of eagles that people are trying or they they've kicked out of the, they kick the eagles out of the nest so speaking up for them you know speaking up for 
unnecessary tree like how do you say it? unnecessary cutting down of trees you know sometimes they just want to cut down trees for i don't know why but it's not necessary so speaking up for them um speaking up for even nature you know like people leaving poop bags in the forest cleaning it out picking up wrappers and stuff like that um it to me it sounds you know it can sound very basic but i think when you start to do it because you love you start to become so aware of the love that the plants have for you and the love that you can give back for the plants it becomes a more joyous energetic exchange because you already know like oh this is what the, the earth is doing for me and you know yeah i can recycle and i can do this but i feel like i can do more because now i know that the earth loves me so much that there's nothing i wouldn't do for the earth um yeah so i think i started doing that more so well i think what i'm trying to say and communicate across uh is that it really made me more bold for the earth it's like now i don't care like you see me talking to plants okay you know you want to think i'm crazy that's fine um in like bigger settings or like professional settings and stuff i'm i'm still going to talk about the earth the, the the way that i learned from this book and the way that i know the earth is instead of you know whatever we've been led to believe about the earth no i'm still gonna i'm gonna do it and if you want to think i'm crazy okay like do it i don't care um so yeah it really inspired me to do things that way what about you Thank you for, for becoming that warrior for the earth. I love it. That guardian, thank you so much. That's very inspiring. Yeah. Um, for me, it's along the same lines, but I also have this memory of uh, this summer. I, I started carrying goggles when I go swimming because I'm, I'm wearing contact lenses. So it's very difficult to swim in the, in the sea and, and not open my eyes so I started witnessing a lot of underwater um, sceneries that I haven't seen since I was a kid and it was very wonderful to be like you know I'm a child of this earth I'm a child of the water and I'm going to be in the middle of those fishes not as a human person who can you know consume it take a photo or whatever I'm going to be a fish with the fish and and I was just in the middle of them and and, and in time I, I saw something that I could be a part of instead of being an observer and filling myself with that childlike glee and bliss and love and so that's that's really what I do now I'm, I'm hugging trees I'm I'm not moving for 45 minutes because there's a squirrel and I, I want to see like how we could interact and and not be not call it a friend or not call it uh, uh, anything that could be a, a form of possession, but just like a, a, a more like a timid and silent observation and being part of the moment instead of expecting all the little things that we've been trained to expect. And so just like loving, just emitting that love and, 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 and seeing what happens. And I just, yeah, so... I'm talking a lot about animals right now, but this it's really what's going on and, and animals are being a huge guide to me right now after last year where it was a lot of trees. So I'm excited and and I love every, hmm, how could I call it? Every uh, person that is on this earth, every living being that is conscious and breathing here on this earth. Oh, not breathing, you know, <laughs> but like alive. <laughs> thank you for sharing that that's really beautiful and you know I really feel feel it when like you know you talk about the presence that you're bringing in to every moment because that's really what it's supposed to be right being able to enjoy even the simplest of things and that's like a pleasure on this earth you know I was re-watching soul like a going off tangent I was re-watching Soul uh the other night and you know the scene where I think like 22 is looking up and she sees like a leaf or a flower petal or something and it's like yeah that the simplest things like just being present in the moment you can just feel like how amazing like just that one petal falling onto you is because there's never going to be another petal like like that there's never going to be another moment um so yeah 
I love that. Thank you for sharing this. It's there is a magic in everything. And last year when I was uh, really being guided by trees and it was fall at some point, I was walking in the streets of Paris and a lot of the leaves from the trees were uh, being shaken by the wind and they would fall on me. And energetically speaking, I, I felt like the trees were reaching out to me and caressing me. And, and like giving out that leaf that would never come back, but it was still an energetic arm wow. coming and, and soothing me because I was having, you know, maybe some sadness. I don't remember exactly, but I remember being stopped in my tracks and being like, <laughs> what's go wow, what's going on here? Wow, okay. Yes. So yeah, we, we live in a world that reaches out and communicates and is always in conversation with us. Can we answer? <laughs> Can we pick up the phone? <laughs> that's, that's really beautiful. Yeah, thank you for sharing that like experience that you have with the trees. And it actually reminds me of um, the Eva Marquez. I think it was in her book. It could be on her website, but I'm pretty sure it's in a book now. Um, where she she talks about how she was a kid and she's climbing these trees in her parents backyard um and she got really high one day and she fell from the tree but because she already had established not because she had already established but like she she had a connection with the tree um and the tree like kind of changed its branch or something and maybe i remember it remembering it wrong and I'll find this after we're done. Um, but the tree actually broke her fall. So she she wasn't badly hurt or anything from falling from the tree. So I do think that, yeah, the tree is, the plants, they're very conscious. They're always trying to communicate with you. You know, sometimes I go in the forest and I hear the trees just, just saying hello, you know. Sometimes it's not even information that's needed. It's just a simple hello and that's it. And yeah. So thank you for sharing that. It definitely is exactly like that. And um, I'm going to mention another book that I listened to, Entangled Life by Merlin Sheldrake, who talks only about fungi and, and mushrooms. And he talks about the networks and the interactions between trees and mushrooms. And it, I really recommend this book and it really shows you how it's all underground communities talking to each other, exchanging medicine together, preventing uh, pandemics, pandem pandem epidemics, and like just like relaying so many messages and, the, and, and then also just creating new things out of it, which are the mushrooms that we see above the earth. And it was very beautiful because um, my work energetically as grid working and, and in a way creating that through my videos on YouTube and creating that relay of information that comes and linking up other healers and like you and, and linking up new themes and books and informations. And I was talking about this with friends and, and talking about the, the network of information that exists there and how society would benefit from, from doing that and from interacting with each other in a, you know, the more we support each other, the more help we get, like the more we all benefit from it instead of, you know, keeping up our resources and not sharing. So um, yeah, the, the whole world, I think trees and plants, animals, they're all obviously the survival where they have to kill each other in, in order to eat each other and, and survive. But there's also a huge, a huge help, a huge, a huge support system that exists there. So I hope that we can be inspired by it. Yeah, I agree. Thank you for thank you for sharing that. Um, it really resonates with me. Anything with trees really resonates with me. <laughs> but thank you for sharing that with me. And thank you for sharing the Eva Marcus story too, because now we can introduce the new book. <laughs> <laughs> so our new book for um for our book club is called activate your cosmic dna your starseed family from the pleiades Sirius andromeda centers epsilon eridani and lyra and it's by eva marquez who is a wonderful healer and teacher and 
YouTube channel. And she has published many books on Amazon and her first book in physical form in English is out, has been out since the summer solstice and it's amazing. And so this is our next book. I highly recommend you to read it and send us questions that you might have for the author because our next book club interview is with the author. Yay! Yay! <laughs> yeah, and we look forward to interviewing more authors as well. That would be wonderful. If we could reach out to more people, I would love. <gasps> Imagine interviewing Robin Walker <gasps> and <Yeah>. Tom Kenyon. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Yes. Goals. <laughs> yeah. Do you have anything else you would like to share about this book or about anything else? I, no, I actually don't. Like, this book was, a, I don't know, I'm going to say this book is like 100 out of 100. And yeah I highly recommend you read this book you know on your own time take your time with it because each story is is a like I don't know it's like a gift this book is a gift to the world um I love you so much so I'm really glad that we did this book for book club me too and tell us your stories use the comment section and tell us your stories your interaction and your relationships with the earth with nature with a plant with a beloved animal, with anything, with the clouds, with anything, just tell us. Because we all have those stories within us and sometimes we don't share them because it's not always a safe space, but we do have them, whether they're from childhood or from now or something you can create in the future of being inspired by this book. Yeah. <laughs> See you next month. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>